Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We have got an awesome topic, an awesome demo that we're gonna be looking at. And what we're really gonna be focused on is multi-step research and analytics. How do you go beyond simple question answering or simple summarization to really do complex multi-step analytics, preparing more complex types of deliverables, using LLMware and using slim models and doing all of it as always running on a CPU. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. First, what is a slim? A slim is a structured language instruction model. These are small specialized function calling LLMs that have been designed to provide structured outputs, Python dictionaries, JSON, and SQL, all of which can be handled programmatically and then seamlessly integrated into a multi-step process. So the way that we like to think about this is where people are looking to really deploy generative AI for true knowledge-based automation in the enterprise, it's not usually a single step. In fact, it's multiple steps, in fact, with multiple specialized skills that need to be brought to bear. Oftentimes, this can be represented as a linear pipeline, but a linear pipeline that has some usual decisionality in it of something comes in, perhaps we want to extract some key information from that as a first pass. Maybe we want to use that information to do some type of lookup in a knowledge base, but then typically we want to do some form of classification. Perhaps it's a specialized model or tool that runs some type of classification activity, and based on that, branches off and sends it to other specialized models that are going off and doing additional processing based on what we've learned from that classification. At the end of this process, ultimately it all needs to come together and then be delivered and connected into a business as usual enterprise process. And underpinning all of it needs to be an AI ready knowledge base. That AI ready knowledge base needs to consist of you know, documents and files and unstructured information that's ingested, parsed, extract, and text chunked at scale into some form of a text collection index that's then vectored Vectorized by running it through an embedding model, typically an embedding model that's been fine-tuned and optimized for that domain in that industry, put in a vector data store, and then ultimately integrated into some type of intersection with SQL table data stores that oftentimes are where most valuable enterprise information sits. So this is the big picture, but what we're gonna do today, as we're thinking about the future and we're thinking about where AI is going, I think we wanted to take a moment and actually look at one of the most iconic kind of moments that ultimately helped to shape the formation of the software industry. And that's really the partnership and then subsequent rivalry between Microsoft and IBM. The partnership between IBM and Microsoft in the early 80s is what gave us Microsoft as this dominant player in the operating system. As the relationship ultimately became more of a rivalry and a competition, that ultimately is what shaped you know, the direction in the early days of the software industry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this as a research project. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a knowledge base of Microsoft materials. In this case, for the purpose of the demo, we're gonna keep it pretty simple, but we're gonna illustrate for you how you can build a very large knowledge base around this and very quickly scale it. We're then gonna run a fairly basic query against it. What we wanna do is out of this knowledge base of Microsoft materials is we wanna find anywhere that IBM comes up because that's really what we're looking for. We're interested in wherever Microsoft and IBM are mentioned in the course of this knowledge base, but that isn't really what we're looking for. What we wanna find then is once we've identified where Microsoft and IBM are both referenced, we really wanna look at the sentiment analysis of it because it's the rivalry. We wanna find any of those passages where there's some sort of negative sentiment because that's probably revealing the rivalry and the tension between the two parties. And then finally, if we've identified that it's IBM, if we've identified that the sentiment is negative, that's actually the research that we wanna do. And then we wanna dive really deep and look at a lot of very specific things around that type of information. That's ultimately the deliverable that we're looking to create. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip over. I'm gonna show you the code and then we're gonna go run the demo, really walking through this end-to-end -end, multi-step type of research activity, show you how easy it is to start deploying these types of things all running locally on a CPU. I flipped over to my IDE. Let's take a couple of minutes and really decompose the code just so you can get a sense of what the code does and how it maps up to the high level workflow that we just took a look at on the PowerPoint chart. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run the demo. We can really see the whole thing in action. What this demo uses, it, it really capitalizes on a new capability in LLMware, the LLMFX class. We're gonna skip through the first part relatively quickly. We cover that in a lot of other demos and tutorials, but step one is we're gonna create 
create an AI-ready knowledge base by parsing, text chunking, and indexing from you know documents. That's actually the process of creating a library. Where the demo really starts is we're going to run a query of IBM. We're going to get all of those results, all of the various passages that are in that library collection that refer to IBM, along with all the metadata, the pages, the sources, all that sort of thing. And then we're going to instantiate our agent. We're going to instantiate it as an instance of the LMFX class. We're going to load a whole bunch of tools. These are small, specialized, slim models that have been 4-bit quantized so that we can run and load them really, really quickly and use them on a CPU. We're then going to pass in our work. The work we're going to pass to the agent are those search results. And then we're going to run through um, an iteration. And the iteration is we're going to ask the agent, go through uh, that list of work items and run sentiment processing against it. Keep going until you can't get any more. When you can't find any more, then break the process. And then we're gonna run a follow-up, which is looking at all of the results and all of the analysis that have been prepared of that sentiment. Wherever we find sentiment that was negative, those are the work items that we actually wanna follow up on. We're then gonna iterate through that follow-up list. And on that, we're gonna run an analysis of the tags, emotions, topics, named entities, and we're going to ask for a brief summary. We're going to assemble all of those report by report by report, assemble that with the source data, the information of the original passage and what was found, and then we're going to assemble and deliver all of that as our report. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and let's see this code in action. Okay, so we've created our library. It created a bunch of text chunks. That process is done. And now we're starting to step through. We've identified all the passages that had IBM, you can see we're running this sentiment analysis against it. The agent has a journaling capability. We can turn it off if you don't wanna see this on the screen. We've turned it on. It's very verbose, but it gives a really nice structured journal of all the work that's being done in terms of all the various inferences. And we'll come back and we'll take a look at that once the process is done. But you can see it's going through every single passage, wherever it's finding the sentiment, and then wherever it identifies it as negative, those are the passages that we wanna come back and do some further analysis of. So now we've started to do that secondary analysis, looking for the emotions, the topics, looking for the named entities, and running some basic summarization. All of this is being done then on the items that we identified where IBM was present and where the sentiment appeared to be negative. So this is gonna run for probably another 30 seconds or so. And then once it's done, we'll, we'll take a look at the end deliverable, and then we'll also come back and we'll walk through these logs. So we're making good progress, almost done. It'll just take another second, there we go. So we've just finished the analysis and we went through 180 steps. We ran 50 different inferences. These were different calls to LLMs. We used six different LLM models, the ones that are listed there. All of this was running locally on a CPU machine, so from a data privacy point of view. And let's go and let's actually look at the output that we were able to produce. So that's right here. We're showing the selected reports of all the areas where IBM was found and the sentiment was negative. And in each of these gives the sentiment, it gives the tags, the emotions, the identification of the topics, the key people that were mentioned. There's a summary that was provided. And then it's really cool. We've gathered the source information as well. So we can see where that was and what page that information was on. All of this then delivered as a set of reports with all of these structured keys consistent element by element. We can see the commentary, we can see the key information. This gives us a great basis then for the next step in our analysis of really identifying those places where IBM came up in a negative context and what were some of the contexts around it. Here, this was around a joint effort to develop OS2. Here, IBM didn't develop the processes very well. Here was a case around the joint development agreement in 1985. Here in 1981, it extracted some key information around some of the competitors and their financials. And then IBM was still promoting Windows, but again, there was some source of underlying tension. You can see the summary reports that were generated. So now let's go back and let's go back all the way up to the top of what happened here. We did our parsing, we created our library, we ran our query, that identified 20 different text passages involving IBM. 
We then loaded our tools. We then started stepping through this analysis for each of those 20 passages representing IBM. We were looking for a case where the sentiment came back negative. You can see all the color coding gives us a view of the underlying confidence and some of the other choices that were considered by the LM at each generative step. Each of these then, as we're iterating through all of these steps, the steps are being counted and aggregated, and we're iterating through every single one of the search results. And then we've just completed that. So at step 87, we've completed going through and iterating through all those 87 steps. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take the passages where the sentiment was evaluated as negative. You can see the list here, passage two, four, five, eight, 10, and 18. Those are the ones that we wanna do this deep dive on and create the reports that I just showed you. So you can see then we start to go to work. We do that deep dive on each of those. We run the analysis of the tags, the emotions, what the topic was, code quality was the topic of this one. The people then that were identified as well as the organizations, not surprising, it was Microsoft and IBM were the two organizations referenced. We then go on, we ask basic summarization. We get that summarization right here. And then we go on to the next block. You again, see the same analysis, the tags, the emotions, the topics, the people that were involved, so on and so forth, iterating through all of those areas where we had identified IBM and a negative sentiment. And then as we mentioned before, we have our complete report that was automatically generated. And again, coming back to the code, the code is deceptively simple. We parse the documents, we run our query, we create our agent, we pass the tools to the agent, we then load work to the agent of those search results. We iterate through as a first pass all the sentiment analysis. We then follow up wherever the sentiment was negative. For that follow-up list, that subset of work items, we wanna run through these additional analyses of tags, emotions, topics, NER, and getting a brief summary. All of those then get collated and organized into the report that we see at the very end. So hopefully this brings it to life for you. We've run through a pretty complex structured analysis in, in a minute or two, relatively simple 20 or 30 lines of code to do this type of multifaceted analysis with a clear structured output at the end. And we've learned a little bit about the history of the software industry. Any questions, please reach out to us on Discord. Please check out the example as always on LLMware and please stay tuned. We've got a whole bunch more videos really talking about some of these topics of multi-step analysis, slim models, and um, how to really do all of them with LLMware. Thank you everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.